Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that just keeps going. Today in the news, Monster Hunter Rise is out on PC. How do I know? Because every single one of my friends is playing it on Twitch right now. I mean, I love Monster Hunter. I liked Monster Hunter Rise, but I hate grinding, and that is all those games are. And one of the features, or lack thereof, of Monster Hunter Rise going from Switch to PC is you cannot take any saves with you. So if you're starting on PC, you're starting from scratch, and frankly, I cannot be asked to do that. It's just not gonna happen. It's a problem that happens all the time. Every time there's a console release, then a PC release, or a PC release, then a console release, they're always like, you can play this again, and maybe there are some games I would love to do that, but for most games, count me out. And maybe, going back to what we talked about yesterday, in some far-flung reality where the world is at peace, and Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo and PCs can all share save files, or like we talked about yesterday, ban lists, whatever the case may be, in some magical future where that happens, I might actually be happy. But right now, I have to live in a world where if I start playing a game on one thing, I'm playing it there, and I'm finishing it there, and if I ever touch it again, it's gonna be on that one thing. That's it. Speaking of consoles, PlayStation announced that, hey, we don't have that many PlayStation 5s, so we're gonna start making PS4s. In fact, they plan to make a million more over the next year. The hope, of course, is, is them trying to relieve some sort of pressure on the demand for PlayStation 5s and fill that vacuum in the market where people are trying to snatch up a PlayStation. But, honest question, is that what people want? I'm gonna flat out say no, right? That's, that's not what anyone wants. We want PlayStation 5s. Me, personally, I, I have a new PlayStation. I have a new Xbox. I have a Switch. I, I have a PC. I have everything that I could possibly want. It's my job. It's, it's part of my daily work to go make sure I have all the things I need to play the games that people want me to play. But for the majority of the world, the vast majority, people have one console, maybe two? And when I think about those consumers, and I think about where I came from, when I was a kid, everyone had a Nintendo and I didn't, and I kept bugging my parents for Nintendo, and I kept asking for Nintendo, and eventually my uncle told them, hey, a Super Nintendo is coming out soon. And my parents decided, well, why would we get you the Nintendo when in a few months or a year, a Super Nintendo is coming out, and then you're just gonna want that? And they were right. When Super Nintendo came out, I was the first kid to have one. I invited all my friends over, even just random kids from school. I was like, you gotta check this out. Everyone came over immediately went home and was like, Mom, Dad, can I get a Super Nintendo? And now, basically, what my parents had warned me of was happening in all these other households. And it took a while for everyone else to get that Super Nintendo. Because again, most people have one console. So, what I'm trying to say is, I think for most people, they would rather wait out the delays, wait out the high price scalpers, all that stuff, and just wait for the console they want, rather than to just take whatever was available. And to be honest, for all of you with FOMO, there's just not that many next-gen exclusives that you're missing out on that won't be here in a year. Most things worth playing right now are cross-generational, so maybe that's what PlayStation's counting on? To me, from a layman with no real business sense, it seems kind of like a waste, but I don't know what the market is like for PlayStation 4. It could be in super high demand still? It probably is in super high demand still, and maybe I'm just coming at this from like a Western-centric view. Maybe one of you know, maybe there's some data out there, I would love to see it. The stats I do know though, and something to consider, going back to what I said earlier, PS4 sales were much stronger in year three and four than they were in year one and two. And the reasoning, I'm sure, has to do with supply and all these different things, but I would wager it probably has a lot to do with the actual amount of games available, right? In the beginning of PS4, just like currently with PS5, there wasn't a lot to play. So the incentive to get one wasn't very high. And I remember back then on podcasts and different things I did, I was like, you don't need a PS4 right away, wait. I'm saying the same thing right now. You don't need a PS5 right away, and if you're like enticed by a PS4 and you don't already own a console, maybe get it, but I'd still say wait. And if you have a PS4, there's no reason to, to, to fret. And if you have a Switch or you have an Xbox, you're doing just fine. And sure, there are games that I'm very excited for, like Horizon Forbidden West, but that's still gonna be there. You're not gonna miss out. 
Don't stress it. Do not worry about this. My advice to you, here it is. Just wait. It's totally fine. Don't stress. If someone really wants a console and they have to have one, there'll be PlayStation 4s out there. But if you don't need one right now, chill, my babies. It's all good. Just wait. PlayStation 5 will be around eventually. And when it happens, you will be in probably that time period where all the games start coming out eventually. And you'll be justified in your purchase. Because I'm going to let you know right now. PlayStation 5 sitting right here that I've played two games on that I haven't been able to play on any other platform. Anyway, that's it for the news. Thank you so much for uh, making this a thing. I'm excited to do this. This is fun. I will see you Monday. Have an excellent weekend. Bye, everybody.